Looking good in Elden Ring has never felt better. You can find a lot of incredible armor sets still in the endgame of Elden Ring and some of them don't just get to look really awesome, they might also provide a secret bonus or might just drop alongside some really powerful weapons. That's why today we'll take a look at 6 more incredible armor sets you'll definitely not want to miss out on in Elden Ring. But speaking of things you don't want to miss out, if you really enjoy gaming discounts or just want to buy games at the best prices around, you should definitely check out Instant Gaming. I've been using their website for years, it never failed me and every purchase you make doesn't just get to help you, it also helps out the channel in the process in case you want to show your support. They also helped me set up a ton of giveaways in the past so if you also want to win free games or just get cheaper games, definitely check them out using my links down below. With that out of the way though, let's talk about the first set on the list and that's going to be the really awesome and dark-ish looking Sanguine Noble set. This is dropped by a Sanguine Noble in in the west part of the mountaintops in the middle of a rose field so that's quite a fitting theme if I were to say so myself. Once you defeat the enemy it will drop the head, chest and feet with no wrist because yeah there's no wrist for this armor set but overall it looks absolutely stunning. It has a good amount of magic, holy and lightning damage negation, a pretty good set of vitality and focus resistance but of course you're probably going to aim for this just because of the looks. It kind of fits that mage sort of like vampire kind of character that you might want to build towards the end game it just looks amazing one of my favorite sets and of course you look like a complete and other badass you can actually fit this quite well if you combine it with the albrick set which you find also a bit later on in the game it's another excellent choice for mages especially if fashion souls is your true end game you can easily find this in the first floor of the fortified manor once you reach the royal capital it will be right there in the middle of it upon this corpse. You can definitely add the wrist from the Albrick set to the Sanguine Noble and maybe even switch a few things around to make it look complete. Now an advantage that the Albrick set has is the fact that it comes with a 5% damage boost for each armor piece except legs to thorn sorcery. So these including the Briars of Sin and Briars of Punishment will get a total of 15% damage boost if you have the whole set equipped minus those legs. These are some pretty awesome looking sorceries I'm not going to lie if you want to play as a blood mage it kind of fits one of them can be used from really far away while the other one causes the thorns to spawn around your character so it's more aimed towards close range that being said it's just a shame that the damage on the sorceries are not that great it could definitely be better and if well from software does something in the future maybe we could create a build around this now moving on to number three let's talk about another favorite of mine which is the Drake Knight armor set you can find this from a chest inside Inside the crumbling Azula. You have to start from the sides the Great Bridge Waypoint right here towards the end and instead of heading over towards Maliket you will want to instead turn back and head inside one of these big buildings right here in front of you. From here just exit the first balcony to the right side and then head over to the northeastern corner right here where you will see there's a platform with a beast below you. Jump down, defeat the enemy or ignore it doesn't really matter and then follow the bridge until you reach this lift in front of you. Activate this and from this point on head over to the left side. This will bring you to this end area with the chest which is going to contain the entire armor set right away. As I've said this is one of the most unique armor sets right now in Elden Ring. It's the only one that features actual dragon wings from my knowledge as a form of a cape on your back so it kind of feels like you're wearing that as a badge of honor of sort after defeating so many dragons in the game and it looks quite awesome even though I kind of wish that the wings on the back were symmetrical. It also comes with a pretty good fire resistance and some nice poise at 29 with a set weight of being just 22 so I would say that that's quite a nice combo right there to have for a good looking set. Now moving on to number 4, let's talk about a really impressive armor of Zamor and of course also the weapon that you get from the same encounter, actually a boss inside of the giant conquering hero's grave right here in the mountaintops. Now to reach this area in the first place you have to start from the giant's grave post grace and keep the right side until you reach kind of like this edge with the ruins. You have to head over inside, take the lift and this is going to bring you to the bottom. From this point on what you want to do is to jump into the first 
towards the big room, ignoring all of these enemies. If you feel overwhelmed in the later stages, you can definitely use this light platform to remove the shade of the enemies because otherwise you cannot kill them. Once you do that, head over deeper into the ruins until you reach another one of these elevators that will bring you down further into the level. Once you're down, what you can do is to go ahead and open up the big gate using the contraption right next to it, but at the same time, I also recommend going back to the lift and just activate it and then jump off it because this is going to also unlock a second platform with the light and you will need that to defeat a shaded troll that's protecting the boss area. So do that, defeat the troll and this will leave you for the final room where you will have to defeat Zamor. Now he uses a ton of ice, he can deal a ton of damage, it's pretty mobile for a boss so what you want to do is to just well use AoE like how I did. If you want to check this build I already covered it in a previous video. But once you defeat them they drop the entire set and also a really powerful sword that comes with an excellent kind of like frost AoE effect. Now this one weights even less than the previous Drake Knight set and gives a similar amount of poise rating. Is it the most tanky in the game though? Well not really but does it really matter? You probably get these for the cool aesthetics, the cool dreads and of course the nice chain hanging from your left hand. Kind of looks like something an arcane user might want to well wear when playing with that sort of build. Moving on to number 5, let's talk about one of the coolest characters in the game, Yura, and of course the cool armor set that they wear, the Ronin armor set. You actually can get this during the questline for Yura. It begins below the archway just south of the lake in the starting area after you have defeated the dragon in that zone. Now there's a few ways in which you can get this armor. One of them is by just completing and finishing Yura's quest line, which includes fighting a bunch of invaders, even the one at the academy bridge, and Eleonora who also drops her pole blade, which is super useful for any bleed build. Or you can simply ignore the entire quest line, even ignore the character, and eventually once you reach the mountaintops of the giants at the Zamor Ruins waypoint, you will encounter the character in its final stages anyway. But it's going to be actually possessed by somebody, so you're not going to get a good ending out of it, you will still be able to defeat them and they will fully drop the armor set. It looks really awesome, especially if you're a fan of samurai themes. Past that samurai starting armor, this is the other one that also makes you look really close to Ghost of Tsushima if you ever enjoyed that game. I definitely did, so for me it's the next best thing. And finally, this brings us to number 6 and that's going to be the Rotten Gravekeeper set. And of course, if you're playing with a Kratos sort of look, this is probably the best one right now in the entire game. Now to get this as well as a couple of rotten weapons, you have to defeat three duelists you can find in the mountaintops of the giants, each dropping a part of the set and a cool weapon with a rot build up. Now the first one will be located just west of the consecrated snowfield side of grace. It's gonna be located right here in the middle of this graveyard sort of location and defeating them will drop the rotten duelist helmet as well as a rotten battle hammer. The second one will be located northwest in Ordina, the liturgical town. You will find the enemy at the edge of this cliff and once you defeat them they will drop the rotten duelist greaves and of course the rotten great axe. The third and final one will be located at the end of the consecrated snowfield catacombs so you will have to actually unlock this and also the final boss room. So here is a quick guide to navigate these tunnels. Head over through them, ignore the enemies up until you reach this bigger room with a tall statue pillar that kind of shoots a ton of ice around it. Hit it so that you can access the tunnel on the right side more easily and then from here reach the room with the stairs right in front of you. From this point on, don't go up the stairs but instead head over below the archway and then immediately use this gap right here to enter into the second room. From this point on, defeat the enemy or ignore it and then head over to the right, upstairs and then just jump on the pillar that you made go downwards. Hit the pillar carefully without falling, this will bring you upwards to a secret area where you will find the lever that you need to activate to open up the boss room. And from this point on, all you have to do is to head over back to the start of the ruins, right inside of the boss room and you will want to defeat the final duelist 
for the final piece of the armor now of course you don't have to wear that helmet piece if you don't want to it is kind of big and i don't like it but if you want to like cosplay as a kratos kind of character it's definitely an option and probably the best one right now in elden ring it's also going to attract enemies attention and no that's no pun intended it actually has a similar effect to the talisman called shabiri's wall which also attracts aggro from enemies much easier than if you were to not have this equipped but it's totally worth it because then you get to look the part it looks fully red looks really awesome and it only weights about 15 with the full set equipped so definitely worth it these are all of the six armor sets for now totally let me know down below which one of these is your favorite how many of these have you gotten so far and of course also i'll see you guys in the next video so peace out